Hey, hello there. Welcome to Process Pod number 22. I'm uh, just contemplating what things are happening coming up and uh, applying for my classes. I just did a bunch of cat class notes. I thought I would stop and record one of these, which used to be just audio, but now I have the option of using cameras and talking to you on YouTube. So this is the second ever process pod being done via uh, video. Um, so I'm Sal Good Sam. Anyone who's new to the YouTube channel, Max Douglas, aka Sal Good Sam. It's my name backwards. Long story. Um, so I'm in my, I've just reached the midpoint of teaching courses um, at Sin Studio. Uh, using all digital tools of Zoom, you know, virtually, like everyone else. Um, it's interesting. I'm definitely adapting. I think in some ways there are some aspects of it that are an improvement um, and get closer to students, so to speak, when I'm doing the work, the demo work. I've been able to record student feedback using Zoom as well for later on for our class blog. Um, it does mean I'm doing more work that's not unpaid hours that's the thing that needs to get resolved at some point uh, but I'm hoping uh, school will get lots of subscriptions uh, lots of people signing up for the next semester uh, and then that will be not such an issue uh, next semester I'm running doing making comics uh, so that's my introduction to the comics format uh, uh, comics medium sorry uh, course and uh, right now I'm teaching Intro to Cartooning and Dynamic Drawing, which are much more just drawing programs. Um, also been done a little bit with Patreon as, and student patrons, and uh, need to sit down and turn, I think I've talked about this once or before, but just turn like all the things that I teach in my courses into small modules. Um, just in terms of the planning for teaching. So I'm prepared when subjects come up, I'll, I'll have some sort of like structure or approach uh, to how to teach it. And uh, which I do, but they're all kind of, it's built into this larger course structure. So I want to sit down and organize myself a series of modules that address a lot of the more common sub subjects and even some of the less common but specific to my specialties. Um, and I've been writing a little bit so i haven't gotten a lot of work done on mind engines so that's supposed to be my next book and it got postponed because of covid and everything else um and i'm planning on releasing it later and i'm not sure when this is all going to blow over so i haven't committed to when that later is uh but i don't want to do it while people are in lockdown and things are tight and a lot of people are unemployed and just feels like the wrong time to be trying to be hyping and selling a new book and that's fine because I'm never a fan of deadlines anyway. So I was happy to sort of put it on hold. It would have been coming out this late, late this month for FBDM or even possibly earlier this month for TCAF, which has been canceled. And FBDM is basically, it's, it's gone online. So it's, it's basically become a virtual festival, um, which is cool. And I'm doing an event for that. But I decided not to launch my book. Um, and I've been thinking about writing stories. I got a story idea for a short science fiction horror story inspired by what's been going on. So I'm, I'm, I wrote, wrote some notes with that. I want to return to it. And I'm going to do additional chunks of my books, uh, Dream Life and the New Armageddon Blues. So those are being serialized in my engine. And, and the, the first installments were pretty short. And I think I can dramatically enlarge them that it would make for a, a pretty strong book it will be a much bigger first uh issue of mind engine and they might all be big kind of like albums it just means they'll come out less frequent um so that's a lot of those basically I've, I've been in assessment mode and i think like a lot of people i've found it hard to be productive when so much is going on um so a lot of my product productivity time has gone into maintaining my class uh, teaching responsibilities and kept keeping up with 
like I had to do uh, proofreading and corrections on a story for Letters Montreal, which is still on, by the way. I think I think the uh, fundraiser for Letters. Um, let me just pull that up while I'm talking to you. But it's an anthology, so it's part of FBDM, and they're doing a. a it's kind of like a f sequel, actually. Uh, so, yeah, I was right. Letters at Montreal. There was a The Roads of Montreal. It was a book, nice book they put out last year, I think. And uh, um, this year they're doing Letters of Montreal. And then they're also starting their. Uh, oh, and, and, and I have a story in it that I'm. I did a four pager. So, and it was what was I was saying. Yes, right. There's a fundraiser. Uh, I'll I'll make sure that's in the description text when I post this. But um, I believe you've got. Which one takes me to it? I think that's it. Yes, I'm just checking how much time. I believe it's like four days, three days. Four days. Four days left. Um, I'm posting late in the day, so probably three days by the time you see this, you can get yourself a copy of this anthology. It's hopefully going to be one of a series. Oh, there's a video now. I can link to that in the description text stuff. Um, and there's a lot of artists contributing. It's just pretty, pretty cool. It's going to be a mix of English and French stories. My story's in English, but uh, there are probably going to be more French stories. But I think, you know, you definitely would check out a lot of Quebecois, Montreal specifically, but I believe creators are coming from larger Quebec as well. Um, comic scene here is been rich for a long time and it still is so I'm just looking now at some of the uh, promo images of who's contributing and it's cool it's like uh, um, a lot of people I really like so one of my neighbors is a couple of my neighbors are in it um, there's a bunch of cartoonists who live on the same street as me and uh, yeah I'll leave the details to the link in the text down below uh, but go check that out and maybe order yourself a copy. Uh, they are, I think, online on track. Yeah, yeah, we're we're on good track to to make our goal. But you know, we could use it. We're not quite there yet. There's three three four days to go, so go get it. And uh, I'm also doing a presentation. So for the virtual uh, festival, I'm organizing a presentation. I have some headers here to show you. With that in mind so I, I wanted to do a talk it spun out of something that came up in my making last semester at making comics i was talking about different sorts of um, storytelling in a class and i came to mind a couple of scenes so in, in cages by dave mckean and by le journal three um by um i'm gonna butcher his name fabrice Niaud. Nude? I don't think I'm pronouncing his last name right at all. I have to figure that out. i got to work on that because I'm presenting them. Um, and uh, his story, it's interesting. So Cages is a 90s book. I have, I was going to do like a, I'm going to do one of those videos where we go through a book. And I'm going to do Cages and um, preparation for, i got to read it anyway. i got to read both of these Uh and my French reading is pretty much, it's barely reading. I kind of have vague, a vague sense of what's going on, but I'm not very, very, very literate in French, unfortunately. Um, so I, I'm going to do my best to figure out the context in which the scene's happening in that book. One of the beautiful things about both these scenes is they're technically wordless, but neither book is entirely wordless. It's just the scene is wordless. Um, they're scenes of conversations. They are both romantic. Um one has a romantically positive outcome and the other has a kind of tense weird outcome that foreshadows what's going to happen in that story they use mu visual metaphors for music and dance more music in one more dance in the other but both use them and achieve a, a, a sense of movement on the page so these are a couple of slides that I made after. So I, in class, we, we read through both of them on the screen. And then I have some comparisons just to show similarities. So these are what you have here is um, panels from cages on the top left and bottom right of each of these tiles and bottom top left and bottom. Sorry, top right and bottom left. So 
this one here at the top is cages and this one here is journal and then it flips on the other side uh, on the other side of that sheet and likewise this is a uh, oops there we go oh uh, that's cages and, and that's journal but then the one across from it on the in the very far corner is cages again so and these also look like, these these are mirroring um uh, points in the narrative that are echoing each other i feel like like this is this is the end of both those scenes it's the beginning of those, those scenes this is the point in which both stories become abstracted and surrealist um there was already moments actually so they become surrealist at the, at the beginning and then they get abstracted around here and then this is both examples of the characters speaking with pictograms for their voices oops i didn't want to move that there, I messed up the thing. There. I want to make this bigger. And let's get rid of that other one for a second. So you can see, it's covering my faces, but that's fine. Uh, they've got speech uh, that is actual images, actually images in their word balloons. And there's a number, other, number of other interesting properties, but then also differences. And so in the class, I, I made a a presentation of this and uh, talk about it and wrote a blog post about it for the students uh, and I thought it could use more exploration so for this year's FBDM presentation I was planning already even when it was going to be in person uh, I usually do a, a talk called snakes and ladders which there's a, a version of I need to redo it though it's kind of long uh, here on YouTube but um, this is going to be a more compact just sort of analysis and comparison using flow and visual metaphor and and i and that just that idea of dance and music both being represented in a, in a medium that isn't actually necessarily intrinsically suited to it i mean comics are not don't have an motion intrinsically it takes a lot of decompression to get across elaborate dance work um and then music is sound and you can suggest sound in comics but you it's, it doesn't have it intrinsically it's a silent medium so the way artists come up with it is always interesting and the way these two artists did and i think there might be some dna uh connecting them so cages came out in the 90s and fabrice's book came out in 2002 i believe it is but also it's about that chunk of the journal these are actually his journals that chunk of the journal is about 94 right in the middle of and so cages five is the one that has the scene that i'm looking at and right in the middle of the run and journal comes at, uh, is uh, about that point in time in his life and so i'm curious one of the things i'm looking into is whether i can reach out to both artists but specifically i want to ask fabrice if he was influenced and was he thinking about cages because there is some like striking similarities even though there's distinctions too like um, both of them are brilliant artists, um, but Fabrice has a much more draftsman-like approach to the drawing. That's not meant to be, again, a put-down. I, I really admire his art, but it's this much, much more tight, controlled realism, whereas Cages in general and McKean uh, broadly is more interested in um, symbolism and magic realism and surrealism. And his, his art isn't trying to be hyper-realistic. It's, it's uh, brushy in this particular instance. It's big, fat, brushy ink lines and things. And the characters have this fun cartooning approach. That everything's sort of angular and skewed and it looks like it's been rendered in fairly broad strokes with brush. It's a two-tone. They're both black and white. I think it's just striking. Um, and they both use tonality. Um, yeah, so I got a plan for that. That's interesting. And, uh, so that's what I'm up to. What have you been up to? Um, I'm thinking about other things I'm going to do for videos for the, uh, process pod, but for now, I think I'm going to leave it at this. So go check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash salgood and pledge and you can become a student patron for 10 bucks a month or five and i will do a couple times a year a social media portrait pro uh, image or of someone you care about perhaps a portrait of your pet or your child or your loved one um uh, commissions that are kind of fanciful things are also 
on the table. And then uh, digital only, though. And then uh, at $2 a month, you can read all my comics. Basically be a subscriber. Uh, there's a lot of comics there up now, too. So hundreds, hundreds of pages. It's a couple graphic novels. Uh, everything so far done for Mind Engines is available to patrons. Uh, and you'll get the process pod in your inbox. So that's it for now. I'm going to sign out and go figure out what I'm doing next. I've been planning and knolling my, my life the last couple of days, uh, having to adjust to the new realities. Um, so I hope you're handling things well, and take it easy. I'll see you around the internet.